Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter Board Game Review. Today's game, Open Tabletop, is called Iron Clan. Iron Clan is for three players, one to three players. It takes about 30 minutes to anywhere to two hours to play the game. It's a campaign based game, and where you're going to be the crew of the Ironclad and you're going to be taking place in a certain area in which you're going to be moving around collecting different things or doing different missions and um, kind of different campaigns as you go out throughout the game. It might involve um, moving a player a certain area or collecting a certain uh, ships or cargo and all that kind of stuff and you're gonna have choice in the game do you want to do this or this or do you want to make this action or take this action instead and as you go throughout it there's also milestones there's achievements you can get and there's a bunch of unlocks as well you're gonna be collecting different cargos as well as dealing with lots of stuff like space nebulas and solar flares as well as fighting enemy ships off as you're trying to obtain your goal and every single time you're doing something unique and different throughout the game you're going to be going ahead and choosing a crew as well as you're having each and every player make a certain part of your ship and so that way everybody's going to be taking part in the different combats as well as using your characters to perform their mini actions they can throughout the campaign there's a tutorial mission that tells you exactly how to play the game and as you go through it tells you every little basic thing that you need to do because there's a lot of stuff involved in the game nevertheless though it's basically a spaceship flying mission campaign in which you're going to be going around and doing a ton of things there's a ton of components let's go ahead and look at it Okay, so here are all the components for the game Ironclad. In the game, you're going to be getting a ton of stuff, and I'll try and go over each individually as best as I can. You'll be getting these tokens here, these uh, pieces that are called Intel Chits. You'll be placing them on a map that you're going to be constructing for each campaign, and the map is going to be a bunch of different uh, tiles and length and different sizes and shapes. And so you're going to be setting that up, along with having turn trackers here, or, or action trackers. And so every, ac every turn, you're going to get to do two actions, as well as a third one if you have the highest form of morale. These are the Things that involve threat levels as well as different events that occur throughout the game. You're going to be getting uh, these band-aid tokens as well as these kind of used tokens. When you use a character you're going to put on there and if they ever get damaged you're going to flip it over and it's going to be showing that they're damaged. You got a bunch of repair bay and uh, ion thrusters and all these other kind of ship mods that you'll be using throughout the game as well as different chests you can take as well as they, some of them are actually like little unique upgrades for each and every one of your characters you can purchase. Additional intel cards that will be used in different scenarios as well as characters and these are all the characters they're going to be influencing different portions of your ship. You have the bridge, hangar, and weapons bay. And if you're going to play a three-player game, each individual character is going to uh, use these characters along with any time that one of these gets accessed, you're going to be, going to be able to have their hands-on uh, different approach for each of these different areas. You could play one single player and just use this all to yourself, though, as well. Over here are going to be different things that can happen, like space leeches, as well as crossfire infiltrated, as well as a uh, derelict ship, and a bunch of other stuff that can occur throughout the game, uh, distress beacons and whatnot. You're also going to be getting this little solar thing here, which indicates uh, whenever you go across certain aspects on the map, you might have to suffer a penalty, such as a black hole or a pulsar or a supernova. There's just a couple things that can happen to you as you're sailing, as traveling around in space. You're also going to have spaceport services, and depending on if it's a factionless or faction side, you're going to be using different portions of this card to uh, either heal people, go to the saloon to get uh, your heroes rested, maybe traders, you're going to buy uh, salvages and gear and ammo and all that kind of stuff. There's tons of different things that can happen. It depends on not only what side you're going to be using for what planet you're on, but as well as whether you're neutral, friendly, or even an ally of those planets. And for each of the scenarios, as you go through them, you're going to be getting uh, better upgrades uh, to this. Some people are going to like you more, some people are going to dislike you more. So that's, that's another thing to be aware of. Also, these are additional characters you're going to be able to purchase throughout the game or acquire different ships, uh, different uh, ship captains and whatnot, as well as different ships you're going to be obtaining. There's damage markers over here and uh, different ships than enemy ships that you're going to have to deal with sometimes. So there's just a ton of different ones and they have different threat levels. So as you go throughout the different campaign modes, there's going to be a, uh, a weak side and a strong side that you can go ahead and use. Additional things for different, uh, different additional like areas you can go through for all the different campaigns, as well as these are uh, damage things here. When you take your ship takes damage, you're going to lose negative on certain, uh, certain, uh, certain uh, stats and whatnot. And there's your stats listed on the side of all your cards here. And as you take damage, you're going to lose those certain stats. You also have on this board here is your ship, as well as all the different things that your ship uh, will pertain to. First of all, there's a turn marker, which as you go throughout the game, every turn, you're going to move at one. And for each and every different scenario, there's going to be a maximum amount of turns you're going to have. And if you can't complete it within that certain amount of time, you can lose a threat level in which you're going to indicate uh, your threat level throughout the campaign, which will increase as you play the game. Not only that, but you're also going to have a morale tracker, which you can add one to your die or subtract one to your die, or 
even give yourself plus one turn if you're doing really well on morale. There is the crew area here, which is going to give you stats as well, and you can lose certain stats for not having a high enough crew level. If you go down to three uh, crew, you can lose you only have one action per turn, as opposed to your normal two. You have your module, your hole, which you can take damage from, and you have to be careful with that, because if you take damage, you can lose. You have your salvage marker, where you increase as you gain better salvage, and sometimes you have crew abilities and other things that you can use the salvage to gain better abilities, or even save yourself from taking damage. You've got ammo here, which you can purchase and or spend in fights, or on a planet when you purchase them, and as you lose that, you have to replenish that, as well as uh, you can use it to, uh, when you're fighting to do stronger, more damage. You've got your little roll tracker, which will indicate damage on your ship, as well as the modules that you can place on your ship to improve its abilities, like having a repair bay on there. You've also got your normal shield, which you can keep during combat. However, with this any Drew tracker here, whenever you start spending energy, like on your weapons here, it'll tell you that you can lose energy to do stronger, more complex, or even and heroic um, abilities, you have to spend these energies. And as you spend energy, you're going to lose certain things on the ship, and it's going to make it more difficult for you to uh, survive in combat, but at the same time, it's going to give you that little boost that might be needed for you to win the game. You're also going to get a campaign book, as well as a starting guide that will teach you how to play the game, as well as a basic die, and finally, your ship, which is going to let you fly around the galaxy. It's going to be a little token that's going to be used to indicate where you're going on the uh, specific scenario. But that is the main stuff that is included in the game. Ironclad. Okay, so that was the basics of everything that's included in the game. Now to begin the turn. Well, first of all, to mention there's a couple things to set up, which is going to be your crew. You're going to have to pay for them, as well as any modules or equipment that you're going to want to set up throughout the game, as well as when you're setting up each for each different scenario, the different boards, you're going to need to put intel on each and every one of the areas that is not going to be a planet, and intel are going to be front and back little tokens here. It'll say intel on one side, and there'll be something special that happens on the other side. Generally, those special things are bad. It's either bad guys, or you're going to have to suffer some kind of damage, or try and deal with some other unique uh, aspect of the game that is trying to screw you over and stop you from winning the game. Then after you've set up all the boards and made your, sh make your ships all set up, then you're going to proceed to your turns. Every different scenario is different. Some of them have uh, 10 turns, some of them are 6 turns. It all depends on the scenario. There's, I think it's 15 total, and we had 3 to play with here, so we had to play with 3. There's a total of, I think, 15 altogether, how many different uh, scenarios in the game for the campaign. Nevertheless, though, you're going to be able to do 3 different main actions on your turn. One of them is rest, and Rest is allowing you to turn your uh, inactive tokens off of your characters or exhausted tokens off your characters. You can move up to two of them for when you rest. Another action could be to move. You're going to simply take your ship and move it from one space to the next and then suffer whatever happens on those little areas, whether it be a planet that you have to suffer a geomagnetic storm, or if it's just an intel token and you're flying in uh, open space. The other thing you can do is check intel, which is your last action, that is your main action. You can actually just go ahead and flip over an intel card that is next to you and see what that thing is to determine if you want to deal with it or not. There's two other unique actions that you can take throughout the game. One of them, I believe, is to gain salvage, and another one is to uh, heal your character if he takes damage. Because after your first exhaust, if he takes another exhaust, he actually wounds himself, and the only way to heal him is by actually using the heal action or some other um, action that takes place throughout the game, or if you can heal them in different locations and whatnot. But there's three main ones, two additional ones, So and, and they kind of unlock as the game goes on. After you've done taken all your actions and done anything you had to do, whether it be fighting or whether it be just uh, rolling to see how much damage happens, then you're going to move to the next turn and continue like that. After you run out of turns, you lose, or if you end up completing the actions at the end of the scenario, before you run out of turns, you're going to see what happens. Now there is also milestones and there's achievements and all these other things you can have happen if you can complete within a certain amount of time before your turns run out. Maybe, you complete, maybe it's 10 turns and you complete it in 6, you're going to get a bonus of some sort. There's also side quests you can do while you're going through space. If you want to actually turn the ship around and do something else really quick and go back, if you have enough time, you can achieve some kind of equipment and whatnot. It's another option as well. But that's the main aspect. And once you go through the full campaign, for the first part, portion of the campaign, I should say, like campaign 1, you go to the next one. Now everything stays the same and you keep everything you have, you're going to gain currency and you're going to be able to buy new ship members and all that kind of stuff refresh and then start again on the next campaign and they get more complete and more difficult and more on, like, more stuff like that, right? Anyway, let me go ahead and show you a couple turns on how the game works and a little bit about combat and whatnot and how the damage works so you get a good feel of the game ironclad and we'll see what you like.
Okay, so I've gone ahead and set up the game and I put my character or my little token here that indicates my ship right here, as well as set up the ship and it has like little indicators as to where you need to put all these different unique tokens, as well as every single one of my crew members is set up to either the weapons hangar or the bridge area. Here are my two action tokens. When I've gone ahead and used an action, I just flip that over and it is done with. I have 10 turns. Now I don't want to spoil away any of the campaign stuff, so I'm gonna try and avoid by doing that, by instead saying I have 10 turns and I have to make it to one of these five planets. That's actually not what it is, so don't worry about that. But the idea is I'm going to be moving my ship and I have to get to one of these five planets in under 10 turns. If I can do it, if my bonus mission objective of seven or under, then I'm going to get that bonus objective as well. Uh, now, normally you start off with a certain amount of money and you're going to purchase these guys, but they've already done, gone ahead and done that for you. And then you start off with a certain amount of credits where you can buy stuff throughout the campaign. So we're going to go ahead and continue with the game, starting with my character here. I'm going to use one of my actions, which is Intel. And I'm going to go ahead and flip over this to see what it says. This says a derelict ship. And so what would happen is I would move onto this location if I wanted to by spinning this next action or if I don't want to go there because there's a solar flare there I could go over here instead but I think I want to do that so I'm going to use my last action to move go to this derelict ship on the solar flare and what would happen is I would go ahead into these cards here and look up derelict ship then you're going to go ahead and perform the uh, roll of the die or whatever it might be in order to obtain something good or maybe take some kind of action or maybe some enemies spawn and deal with it that way I might want to give away any of this aspects either because I think that's kind of cool the unique thing about the game but in some of them you're going to be able to use these character here and all of them have their own unique abilities and these don't count as actions you can simply use them by turning them and putting them exhausted this guess is if you're Low, if, if he's alone in an operation, um, his his damage or his uh, his action his, his attack is tripled. So his attack attack here is two. So maybe it'd be six if I used him like that. And other things like that. There's all these different abilities here. During uh, the cosmic conditions, Xavier gains plus one to uh, his role involving anything that has to do with uh, I think it's maneuverability. Um, so that would be that. But after you would complete this, then you go on to the next little aspect here, which is the solar flare. And you would also go ahead and look that up on this little cosmic chart here. It tells you supernova, black hole, pulsar, solar flare. And it says, okay, roll two die for damage and uh, see what happens, right? And it tells you kind of, um, sometimes it tells you where it needs to be dealt at. And sometimes you just kind of have to roll and find out. And you're going to look at this chart over here. And when you roll the die, it'll tell you where the damage is going to go. So on a four, you would look at this here and it'd say one damage to the H, which is the hanger here. And so you would go ahead and put damage on the hanger. Where's my little damage tokens? I think it's this one right here. And I would just simply put it here. Now, if I got more, I would actually have to use this and it would say I would lose different things like minus one to all my fighters and mechs, minus two to all my fighters and mechs if I take more damage. One, two, three, four, and five. So taking damage can suffer you consequences as for how your how things affect you in certain ways. And then I roll again, see what happens. This is a one, one, to B, which is the bridge. So the bridge would also take a singular damage, put it like that. And the same would occur, and there's four different portions of the ship for four different areas here. After that would take place, if I had completed both conditions, then I would go ahead and flip these back over, move the turn tracker to two, and continue throughout like that. Maybe you go to the next one, maybe I want to intel again, but you have to remember, be careful. You don't want to intel too much because you might not make it to the area in time. If you did that, you only have two actions, it would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe the farthest area, so it takes six turns. Maybe your goal is to make it under five, or you have to go from here to here, something like that. You have to be careful with your actions, so you don't want to use too many of them. So maybe I'm going to just go ahead and simply move, bust into here, bam, without checking. What does it say? Space leeches. Well, we can go ahead and look at this one, I suppose, just for fun. This one will tell you right here. It says, yeah, that's what I thought, leeches. And it says exhaust up to three heroes, and then you choose which type of symbol you want. And then it tells you based on your threat level, 12, 15, or 18, which is the check you need to make, you roll the die and you choose. You can choose characters to give you bonuses and whatnot. And then if you, if you succeed in victory, it'll tell you what you get. If you fail, it'll tell you what you get as well. You would complete that one. And then you'd have to do the, uh, the what is it, geometric storm, which we look at this thing again. And it would tell you two damage, you'd roll the die, whatnot, and so on and so forth. And you would continue. Now, on the, uh, maybe your next one is to move again. And you go over here to Europa. Europa is actually a planet and doesn't have any of these lint tiles, so that means you could actually go ahead and take a peek at this thing here or this thing depending on what kind of planet it is there it is crossroads or europa and then you can go ahead and choose one of the services and usually they just cost money or something like that and you can gain gear or you can gain new crew and heal and all that good stuff and you would continue moving throughout the game obviously there's going to be battle encounters and if one of these intel flips over where i have to fight something like this uh nomad pirate fighter uh, squadron depending on if it's elite or not depending on how far you are throughout the campaign 
It'll tell you uh, who it attacks, and there's fast ships and normal ships. If it attacks, a, all fast ships attack first, and this will tell you how many, so it says it's fast and attacks twice per phase. Uh, it targets uh, fast ships, and then it'll target slow ships. There's no fast ships, and most fast ships are scouts and stuff. Your main ship is slow. And then it'll give you some other ability here, which is unpredictable, which is plus one to the stat versus fast ships. And then you've got stuff like accuracy, evasion, damage, shields, uh, or sorry, whole shields, and then this is like a special shield that can uh, prevent taking damage from like stuff like solar flares and whatnot. Uh, nevertheless, though, you're going to be rolling against his evasion, and then you're going to be defending based on his accuracy, and you're going to take damage uh, based on his attacks and whatnot. And depending on how many ships there are, you're going to have to try and do damage to them. You have to go through their shield to hit their hole. If you knock out their hole, you'll kill them. And you'll look at, uh, during this phase, everybody's going to choose a character, and they will use that character with their facility. This guy will go to weapons, this guy might go to hangar, this might go to bridge. You would choose one of their abilities, and then, for instance, uh, if I wanted to use this girl to fight with this thing here to fight the dude, I would choose either standard, complex, or heroic actions. Now, these guys here, the um, the complex and heroic stuff, will cost a certain amount of these ener these little energy modules here. And if I spend them, like maybe I want to use heavy cannon battery, it'll do three damage, but at the cost, I'll have to spend one of these guys, which means I have no more shields for the rest of the combat. And so it'll do three damage, and hopefully it'll take somebody out. Now, when the combat's over, after all the energy, depending on how much energy you want to spend and how much you suffer, then you can actually refresh after every combat, so you can use these again. But you can be going back and forth with the enemy fighting. Other things you can do are standard, complex, and heroic actions on the bridge. Maybe you just want to increase certain stats and reduce other ones, or... Um, over here, this one says that you can uh, send a fighter out or a scout out or a mech out. Sometimes you want to use these guys' abilities during the combat, in which case you'll just go ahead and exhaust them. So maybe you want to increase his uh, attack value to 6, you could just go ahead and do that and exhaust him. Or if you needed to do that again, you could, but it's going to cost you a, a bandage or a damage on him. And you can only repair him by uh, either resting, or if he's injured, you have to actually go ahead and use the heal action. And there's a bunch of these things you can use, and they don't cost actions. These are all free to play on the characters. However, once they're used, they're used until you refresh them again, so you have to be careful with how many different abilities you use and whatnot. And there's a ton of different, uh, plethora of different things you can do throughout this and during the combat phase. After that's done, all the characters stay with their, their you know, these things here on them, unless you, you heal them, and then your energy goes back and you continue throughout the game. And you're going to advance throughout it as you go until you reach the certain objective you need to complete. Once you do get to that kind of objective, maybe it's to get to here or something, and you've completed all of these, then you're going to do whatever it says, make any choices you want. Sometimes it'll tell you, do you want to continue to do this, or do you want to, uh, um, it's a bunch of different actions and choices you can kind of make to kind of differ in, in the game and how you can go from uh, neutral with one faction to friendly or an ally. And uh, you can suffer negative points on certain ones if you don't do what they say. So you have to be careful who you want to focus with and who you want to stay uh, friendly with throughout the campaign. That's the basic idea of how you play Ironclad. Obviously it's a campaign game, so it's going to involve completing one mission to the next to the next. There's no necessarily knowing how it's going to end because I only have three campaigns to play here. But I imagine that at the end, if you did a really good job, you get a certain amount of points or something like that. And that's the aspect of the game. Nevertheless, though, that is how you play the game Ironclad. Okay, so a couple caveats with Ironclad. Now, obviously, like I was saying before, there's milestones, and those are going to be basically objectives you can complete while taking care of each and every campaign uh, portion of the campaign. Sometimes it's going to be to complete things in a short amount of period of time, or maybe achieve an extra objective, and sometimes there are going to be intel cards that are going to say Objective B or Objective C, and you can go ahead and read in the book what those objectives are and how you need to complete them. And you can choose, do I want to do that? Do I not want to do that? Oh, it's going to cost me this amount of time, maybe I won't get this objective, and you can go ahead and decide what it is that you want to do, and then you're going to get rewards. And sometimes those rewards are going to come in the form of gear, or maybe they're going to come in the fo uh, form of modules, and there's tons of different things in the game that they're going to be um, you know, unlock as well, and little chests, as well as the different gear pieces are going to be put onto different characters. Characters. And those gear pieces will actually be, sp you have to pay for them uh, for every single scenario around that you go through. So you have to be careful which ones you want to pick up and who you want to give them to because that person's going to be using that weapon throughout the campaign to help you out. Not only that, but like I said before, the damages can flip over. There's two portions of it. There's the basic, well, there's three. There's the basic portion, and then there's the damaged portion number one, damage portion number two. And you can suffer some serious losses throughout that. Obviously, if your hole goes under a certain point, it goes to zero, I think you lose, as well as if you don't complete the mission, a number of turns you're going to lose. And you can basically start over again, not a big deal, and play. Maybe you want to make different choices and whatnot. But nevertheless, that is the basic idea of the game, a complete campaign in outer space and where you're going to be making a lot of choices, making decisions as to how you want to fly, where you want to fly, and how you want to deal with all these crazy things that are going to affect you, as well as all the different unique ships that are coming to get you in the game Ironclad.
All right, so what do I think about the game Ironclad? Well, first of all, this is a big campaign game. And when I got the game, I was looking through it, and there's a lot of rules to understand. You have to go through a lot of this. Hopefully, I explain a good amount for you to uh, get a good idea of how to play the game in a quick amount of time. There are a couple of the little things I didn't explain that I wanted to kind of leave up for you to understand how it is done. But nevertheless, the game is a little complex in how it is formed, as well as there is a lot of different unique symbology on the cards here that are going to help you throughout the game, and you'll need them for different aspects. As well as there's a couple unique things that I thought were really cool. Was like at the end of the campaign, there's a super bonus mission in which you're going to have to defeat this certain thing or do this certain objective. And you can use most of your crew members to help you uh, beat this rollout by uh, increasing their certain stat scores. Maybe it's you got to fight this uh, big alien force that came onto the ship. And you can use all the guys that have guns on your, sh on your ship to increase your die roll. So if it's a 2, 4, 5, and a 6, you add all those up, roll the die. And if you complete it by beating the objective... Or maybe you don't and you have to use a couple other abilities, then you can actually do certain things like that. Really cool, really complex, but really, really unique. If you're into heavy, medium heavy games uh, and you like strategy, you like campaign missions and you don't mind going from one to the next to the next, this is more of a sit down and play for a bit of time game. It's not going to be one of those quick one and done kind of things. You're going to want to continue because your ship stays the same as you go out through campaign, campaign, campaign. It doesn't reset. So that is going to be one of those things where you have to be interested in a campaign. If you like that kind of stuff and you like the whole... Um, it's almost it's almost kind of 4xy with a big campaign aspect really really fun i enjoy the fact that there's so many different modules and pieces and all this stuff together there's so many choices to make choice in a game is so much fun and i love the fact that it's like do you want to help out the bad guys or do you want to help out the good guys if you help the bad guys you're gonna get this rep from them and it's gonna be different and make it more important throughout the game as you advance with them or vice versa you can help out the government but the government doesn't like working with the bad guys so whenever you do something with the bad guys you're gonna be in trouble with them as well and it has that other up and down thing where you're going to be choosing based on where you do what you where you go and what you do how it's going to affect you throughout the game and you can play this one player and no big deal you're going to actually have a good time playing this and i sat there watching it be played for one of the campaigns just to see how it would feel for that player really really enjoyed it as well as three players because each person gets to have their little their bay basically their hangar bay or their bridge or their weapons area and you'll be able to do different actions stuff like that and coordinate your attacks okay what do i want to do you want to do this you want to do that yeah that's how we're going to make this uh the best attack phase we could possibly do it as well as the amount of intrigue and um it's 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 kind of like action based where you're feeling like oh no the, the three ships are on us what's the best way to kill them and in what areas and whatnot and then when you're taking damage you start to feel it not only because of the damage going into the ship but with these extra little pieces here as you're flipping them over and you're like uh oh now the base bridge is really taking a bunch of damage it's affecting our whole, whole very badly or we've lost a lot of crew members and because of that we lost actions on the phase or maybe we've done so well on morale we're at seven now we get three actions per turn really cool the artwork is stellar i love the space artwork i like how it feels almost like american animation kind of feel to it and you do feel like you're flying around almost kind of uh i want to say kind of like a what's it called the the Oh, serenity kind of thing going on. Really cool. Love that aspect of the game. It's super fun. Really, really enjoyed this campaign style based game. They put a lot of effort. You can tell this was a game of love spent into this and time and effort. And just very, very complex though in, in nature and just lots of stuff. The game itself though is very simple to understand, very simple to grasp. There's two actions uh, to take on each turn, three different actions of the of the two to uh, three different choices with those two actions. And there's tons of characters, but really each character only has one ability. And when you're playing three players there's four different abilities that each player gets to look at and say when is the appropriate time to use this so all in all it's not too complex if you have one serious gamer that's playing it that can moderate with everybody else it can be a pretty simple experience while still enjoying the complexity of the campaign and going through all the different choices if you like a space campaign style game with a lot of choice and a lot of different aspects to the game i think you're gonna like ironclad and i did in fact this game is going to my collection Alright guys, thanks for watching Unfiltered Gamer, Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment, as well as checking out this game on Kickstarter. Also, go ahead and check out um, our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. In fact, we are giving away currently Seventh Continent. It's a really nice game. If you haven't, I don't, don't, uh, haven't backed it yet, there's $7 million worth of investment in the game, so I definitely suggest you think about it. At least go to our site and click a couple buttons and get lucky. Maybe you'll win it. Also, go and check out our, our sponsors, Everything Board Games com and the giveaway geek two guys that know how to do their giveaway stuff as well as tons of blog posts and stuff like that definitely check out their stuff they work with me as far as kickstarter content goes and stuff so really cool guys and i think they'd appreciate your patronage as well all right guys well thanks for watching and once again i look forward to seeing you next time